Let's prepare on plate load test of soil. So plate load test, this plate load test is mainly used to find the QU that is the safe pressure and the settlements that are happening in the soil okay so these both uh, components are very important to study the soil so normally this plate load test are carried out for construction of bridges and roads and all the, so they'll be doing the plate load test and then they'll be find, finding the safe bearing capacity of the soil okay so uh, how they will do is actually they'll fix a plate over the soil and apply the pressure so usually they will apply the pressure by uh, putting some weight on that normally sandbags will be used upon the plates so that the uh, pressure is happening at the plate and with respect to that pressure what is the settlement happening also will be measured using any gauge fixer there okay so this is the normal principle happening in the plate load test so the plate size will be of normally 30 centimeter cross 30 to 75 cross 75 centimeter for dense sand means it is 30 to 30 and for clay silty soil it is 60 to 60 then the thickness of plate is generally 25 mm then the test pit with no so it should be 5 times the width of the plate that is uh, b by bp should be or d by dp should be equal to 5 then the base of the test pit should be compacted for 7 kps then only you will get the accurate answer and then the pressure applied and the settlement of the plate is noted with three dial gauges i said no dial gauges will be fixed to measure the settlement and also the pressure applied also we don't know because we are just uh, um, giving the weight upon it and it will be only converted to pressure so both the pressure and the settlement will be uh, absorbed from these three gauges and a graph also will be plotted with respect to the values okay and then the graph should be in a log log plot okay so that is log q in the x axis and log settlement in the y axis so it is based on is 1888 1962 okay so why this log log means always uh, we prefer log log where means when the values are very closer to each other and they are very uh, smaller values okay so then only we go for this log log plot and here the settlement and pressure changes will be very minute so that we go for this plot and the maximum load applied is 1.5 times the probable ultimate load and 3 times the proposed allowable bearing pressure okay so these are the some important points to be studied uh, when you are looking into the plate load test I am, sell, I am telling these in the view of the objective question. So these points are very important. And then if the breaking point doesn't occur in the graph, that is with respect to settlement and uh, pressure, we are drawing a graph. No? So at, at a point it should break and it should fail. No? So if that point doesn't occur means what they will do is they will take the settlement equal to the 1 by 5th of the width of the test plate. So the test plates 1 by 5 times the width will be taken as the settlement value and at that settlement we will be stopping the procedure okay and then SBC we know already it is QU by F where F is generally 2 to 2.5 and then the limitations of this method is given so this method is not suitable for uh, the soil when there is a rise of water table happening there and tests only the soil characteristics within a depth less than twice the width of the plate and we have seen the significant depth you know so 0.1 cube so that is also an important factor and then it is a short duration test so does not give ultimate settlement of the clay and then clay is independent of the size of the footing but sand is dependent of the size of the footing so this is also important so now we will see the formula so these both formulas are very very important because Mostly they will be asking one question using this formula in all the objective type exams. Okay, so here it is the ratio of SF by SP. S means it is settlement, B means it is width. Okay, Q means it is pressure. So uh, it is settlement of foundation by settlement of the plate load, which is equal to width of the footing by width of the plate load. And if such formulas, can, how can be used means in the question they will be giving the settlement for 
uh, the plate load alone and the width for plate load and foundation they will be giving and they will ask you to find the settlement for the foundation so it is a direct formula and you can use it directly so this is in the clay case of the clay soil and q also will be same in the clay soil and the next is the sandy soil so in sandy soil it is somewhat big formula sf by sp is equal to bf into bp plus 0.3 by bp into bf plus 0.3 the whole square and q also here qf by qp will be equal to bf by bq okay so this is the formula and uh, here s should be always in mm and b should be always in meter so you shouldn't convert meter to m mm because anyway this is going to be a ratio only because numerator and denominator is going to get cancelled but you should not uh, as per the norms you should not use ch or change into m mm, mm that is the b you should keep it in meter and settlement as m mm only and then the Mayerhoff's method so this is the last uh, concept we are going to see in this bearing capacity unit so here the shearing resistance above the footing is considered and this is supplied for both deep and shallow foundation whereas these two conditions are not considered in Tetsagi so therefore this two points are an advantage to this Mayerhoff's method and then live load plus wind load plus dead load is considered means then bearing capacity should be multiplied by 1.25 that is 25 percentage increase is given so that only one has changed to 1.25 and 33 percentage in steel why i have written this in steel means uh, because in steel the permissible stress should be increased by 33 percentage and we will write 1.33 into the design load like that we will be writing in there so to compare and study i have written that statement here also and for coarse grain the wind load should be considered therefore it is again the same point live load wind load and dead load should be considered for the coarse grain soil and then comes the differential settlement so there are two settlements here one is the differential settlement and another one is the allowable settlement okay so the differential settlement will be nearly equal to 75 percentage of the maximum settlement so the value for the differential settlement is given here it is 25 mm for sandy soils and 40 mm for the clay soil so the bottom i have given that and for allowable settlement i have not given here but i am telling you uh, you noted that also in allowable settlement you should uh, categorize into two foundations so one is for isolated foundation and another one is for raft foundation okay and here it is sand and hard clay and then plastic clay okay isolated foundation raft foundation and this is for sand and hard clay and plastic clay so now we can write like this so it is 50 mm 75 mm 75 mm and 100 mm okay so when it is a isolated foundation in plastic clay then 75 mm is your allowable settlement when it is raft foundation in sand it is 75 mm so like that you can choose the answer thank you and keep watching for the next lecture on pile foundation